project, uh, and this was funded by an MRC strategic award um, of around three and a quarter million pounds. Um, and almost a million pounds of this was to um, actually uh, undertake the DNA extraction in the samples, which um, wasn't actually undertaken at the, the time we began the project. So we proposed this project in early 2012, um, and this was to build upon some earlier work in uh, assessing the genetic determinants of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or, or COPD. COPD accounts for really substantial morbidity and mortality in the UK and internationally, and its prevalence is actually increasing in many countries worldwide. The environmental determinants include tobacco smoke and indoor air pollution, and whilst genetic determinants have long been known to be important in the etiology of COPD, these were relatively poorly understood with the exception of the alpha-1 antitrypsin mutations which have long been known to be associated with COPD. But these only account for a very small proportion of COPD cases. And genome-wide association studies over the last few years have, had, uh, have uh, given additional insight to the causes of COPD. So this is a measurement called spirometry, which has, in fact, also been undertaken in all of the UK Biobank participants. And during spirometry, these are some of the key summary measurements which are, are used. And this measurement of the forced expiratory volume in one second divided by the forced vital capacity, or the FEV1 over FVC ratio, um, is often used as one of the uh, diagnostic thresholds uh, in the diagnosis of COPD. And this measure, FEV1, often expressed uh, as a percent predicted value based on age and sex and height, is often used in grading severity of COPD. So a strategy that we had used uh, and others had used um, in genome-wide association studies previously was to study large numbers of individuals from general populations who'd had lung function measures undertaken and undertake genome-wide association study. Uh, and you can see here from the two large consortia called spirometer and charge um, had, by the time of design of the UK Belief study, reported uh, between them 26 regions of the genome uh, associated with uh, these lung function traits, FEV1 or ratio of FEV1 over FVC. And subsequently, as sample sizes of cases and controls uh, for studying COPD as a binary phenotype have become available. Many of these have now been associated with COPD, these ones shown in bold on the slide. So the names here refer to the sentinel genes within each of these signals, and these implicate pathways, for example, involving cell migration and wound healing, cellular detoxification, um, mediation of airway caliber, and pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, as well as a number of other pathways, and also genes for which we um, don't yet fully understand their function. So of these associations at the 26 loci, they did certainly implicate many proteins and pathways for which we didn't yet fully understand um, their, their role, and many of them had not been reported to be involved in lung disease before. So this illustrates the potential utility of undertaking a genome-wide approach. However, they did leave many unanswered questions. So to date, uh, we'd only really assayed common variation across the genome using the kinds of genome-wide arrays we'd used, partly as a consequence of those common variants being strongly correlated with other common variants nearby in the genome, we had variable localization of signals. So only in a minority of these 26 loci can we be confident that we've definitely hit on the right gene in terms of uh, functional follow-up and, and translation of those findings subsequently. Collectively, they only explain about 7% of the variance in a ratio of FEV1 over FVC, and that highlights the fact that there are 
many other genetic associations still to be found. Some of those will lie at the lower end of the allele frequency distribution. And um, as Hugh has mentioned earlier, we expect some of those variants to be of much greater functional significance than some of the rare, the, the common variants that we've detected to date. So whilst these studies have provided a useful resource and, and uh, the association test results for all two and a half million SNPs that were tested in these studies are all available in the public domain for other researchers to use. Um, whilst they've provided a useful resource, we felt we could do much more in terms of understanding the gen genetic architecture of the disease and providing uh, a better pathway towards translation. So in the UK Believe study, we've aimed to study variants across the allele frequency distribution, including these lower frequency genetic variants, to test their association with phenotypes defined by the extremes of the lung function distribution. So we need a very large sampling frame in order to be able to do that. And to be able to have a sampling frame big enough to do this separately amongst heavy smokers and uh, amongst non-smokers or never smokers. And what we aim to do through this study is to define novel regions of the genome associated with these traits, to find map known regions, and to detect independent signals in known regions. So this is a sampling frame that we were able to use. Within UK Biobank, around 95% of the participants are of European ancestry. This is based on their self-reporting. Amongst those, um, while spirometry had been undertaken in all individuals, um, there was a finite number of attempts. And uh, just over 427,000 individuals had at least two measures of FEV1 and FVC, which enabled us to assess reproducibility of those measurements. And that's part of the criteria uh, defined by the European Respiratory Society and American Thoracic Society for quality of spirometry. And we adopted these fairly stringent criteria for quality of spirometry, which left us with a sampling frame of just under 276,000 individuals. Using that sampling frame, we sampled 10,000 individuals from the low end of the distribution, 10,000 from the middle of the distribution, and 10,000 from the high end of the percent predicted FEV1 distribution in heavy smokers. We did the same in never smokers, so sampled 50,000 individuals in all. So we did this by calculating the percent predicted FEV1 using UK Biobank healthy non-smokers as a reference population. We adjusted for height separately in age sex strata. Um, and the heavy smokers um, that we sampled from had a mean of 35 pack years of smoking exposure. So one pack year being represented by an individual smoking a pack of 20 cigarettes per day for one year. So that's quite a heavy exposure. So the key steps in our study were to analyze the phenotype data, the spirometry data from all 500,000 participants in order to be able to undertake this sample selection that I've just referred to. At the point we started the study, late in 2012, none of the samples had had their DNA extraction undertaken, so we needed to work with UK Biobank as they uh, developed their pipelines for DNA extraction, and I can report very positive things about our experiences in working with UK Biobank, but I think, as has been mentioned before, this was a learning experience for all of us in, in many respects. We uh, were very keen to randomize our samples, uh, randomize the order in which the samples were plated and genotyped to guard against possible batch effects, and that's a procedure that uh, was maintained through the study. And as has been mentioned, we came up with an initial array specification. A tendering process uh, was gone through to accompany that. Um, the outcome of that tendering process is that uh, the um, contract was awarded to Affymetrix. Uh, and our genotyping was also undertaken by 
Affymetrics as well as the array design and production. And that genotyping has taken place in Santa Clara. And for this particular project, 50,000 samples, it's been done in 11 batches, each of 50 genotyping plates. I should just say that in early 2012, um, when we submitted our application to the MRC, our proposal was to use a customised exome array so that we would have cost-effective coverage of rare putative functional variants, but we would supplement that by substantial content um, which would be represent the common variants um, which had shown association e uh, even at, at sub-genome-wide significance thresholds um, from previous genome-wide association studies of lung function. And whilst this would have been very useful for the specific traits that we wished to study um, in UK Believe, as we realised that genotyping platforms were improving and costs were reducing, we pushed very hard to include genome-wide content. <coughs> Excuse me. We pushed very hard to include genome-wide content on the genotyping array because we realised that this would have the greatest utility for the broad range of traits that have been studied in UK Biobank. So Hugh's covered in quite some detail um, the array design. There are some slight differences between the UK Believe array, which is in, in effect an early version of the UK Biobank array, in that we have a total of 807,000 genetic markers on the array. It's slightly uh, lower number of SNPs that, than were on the later uh, UK Biobank array. And this is partly because for some of the novel um, SNPs, which hadn't been included on previous arrays, for which novel designs were required, we used two probes to assay some of those SNPs. And we were able to work out from that initial experience where the number of probes could be reduced for some of those SNPs and in order to, to get some extra content onto the array in terms of the numbers of SNPs. So that was one difference. Um, another difference is we had a slightly higher content in terms of the uh, number of SNPs uh, on the array in order to perform, in order to perform the role of uh, this, this genome-wide imputation grid for the, these lowest frequency variants, but actually the numbers of variants differing is, is relatively small. So I won't go through these uh, categories again, but they're very similar to the UK Biobank array. Just in terms of the custom respiratory content, which has stayed on the UK Biobank array, this included around 9,000 SNPs, and we aimed to optimize coverage of regions of genome-wide association study with a number of respiratory traits, including lung function, COPD, asthma, pulmonary fibrosis, and smoking behavior. And we also included variants which had shown weaker levels of uh, association in genome-wide association studies uh, of relevant traits. And just to show an example of the kinds of coverage that we were achieving for these low frequency variants in this 1% to 5% range, I've shown here the 26 regions that have been previously associated with those lung function traits from the earlier slide. We aimed to achieve a mean R squared as a measure of imputation quality of at least 0.8 for each of those regions. And you can see that this was achieved for the vast majority and, and it's quite in, in excess of that for, for a large number of regions. One notable exception is MFAP2. Um, uh, this region contains a lot of repetitive sequence and copy number variation, so it's not too surprising we found that, uh, that one a little bit more difficult. So we're now at a stage where we've received our genome-wide genotyping data on all 50,000 samples. We've undertaken initial QC and some much more detailed QC. We've also imputed uh, these uh, samples uh, data after QC um, using sequence data as, as a reference panel. And the data that we used initially was from the 1000 Genomes project. I'll talk a bit more about subsequent rounds of imputations um, uh, a little bit later. 
Um, but I just wanted to provide a very brief summary of our overall QC. So uh, within this table, we're talking about the per sample filters, and down at the bottom, talking about the per genetic variant or per SNP filters. So we included in the study about 5,500 samples. This is including around 500 intended repeat samples so that we could assess, for example, the reproducibility. And we find that the reproducibility of the genotype calls is very high. Overall, through all of the QC steps, we lost around 1% of our samples, about 500 out of the 50,000. Um, and I can tell you that compared with many of the other genome-wide association studies I've been involved in, this is a really very small proportion of samples. Some of these are because they are uh, outliers on principal components plot, which I will show you in a moment. Um, the, other largest, uh, the other large category here is um, the heterozygosity outliers, and this can be to do, for example, with DNA quality or sometimes um, sample contamination. So overall, we lose a very small proportion of samples. We also lose a very small proportion of SNPs from our initial QC. So we've taken forward to analysis SNPs that passed QC in nine or more of the 11 batches, and that's almost 96% of variance. If a SNP failed in only one batch, for example, and it behaved very well in the other batches, it would simply be coded as missing in that particular batch, and it could be imputed. Um, this is a principal components plot. So principal components are generated using the whole of the genome-wide association uh, array genotyping data. Um, it enables us to separate out, separate out ancestries. So this is the background I'm showing for the plot, which is provided by plotting HapMap3 populations. And we see down here European populations. On this axis, Mexican and Asian and Chinese and Japanese samples. On this axis, African samples. And if we superimpose the UK Believe samples, you can see that these all cluster, with a few exceptions, right down in this bottom left-hand corner. And we have just over 100 samples that are outliers and, for the purposes of our initial analyses, are, are excluded. It, may, it, it should be possible, of course, once there are adequate numbers of any individual ancestries to put those back into subsequent analyses. Just to give you an idea of some of the additional QC steps that we've been undertaking, we've explored things like whether or not there are specific SNPs that might show plate effects. So here we've assessed in each of the 11 batches whether there's a strong association between the minor allele count and the plate that uh, samples lie on. Uh, and actually, out of the 807,000 genetic markers, we find a really small proportion which are susceptible to these plate effects. And that could matter in the situation that your plate is associated with your phenotype in some way. Um, as you've heard, we've randomized the order of the samples for, for this study. When we look in more detail, uh, some of these SNPs would even be picked up by a very simple QC filter and therefore excluded. Many of these um, SNPs would actually uh, be coded as missing on a particular, uh, in a particular batch um, because of failing other QC components. <coughs> so in actual fact, the number of SNPs that would remain in the analysis that would show a significant plate effect would only be a few hundred if we didn't pick them up through, through this particular approach. So that's all quite reassuring in terms of the consistency of genotyping using this array. We've looked at some positive control associations. So do we expect, do we find some of the associations with lung function related traits that we might expect to find knowing the results of previous genome-wide association studies? So for these 26 variants that I've mentioned before, if we construct a weighted risk score, and we compare the good lung function end of the distribution with the middle of the distribution, or we compare the bad lung function with the middle of the distribution, you can see that this risk score shows a strong association in both heavy smokers and in never smokers. <coughs> 
If we then compare actually the two extremes of the distribution, so we've got super controls, if you like, with extremely good lung function to compare with those at the bad end of the distribution um, who, who may have COPD, for example, then you can see that we find very strong association with p-value of 1 times 10 to the minus 31 in heavy smokers and 5 times 10 to the minus 44 in the never smokers. So this perhaps illustrates that we do have, uh, at least for these common genetic variants, greater power when we use these super controls. <coughs> we, it's also interesting we find stronger association amongst the never smokers. That probably reflects that with fact that we've got a larger sampling frame and therefore uh, likely a more extreme phenotype in, in that group. So to summarise progress of the study to date, we have an 807,000 uh, genotyping, SNP genotyping array. It shares 96% of the content with the subsequent UK biobank array. We've shared genotype data and shared methods for QC and analysis of the data with Peter Donnelly and colleagues in the UK biobank analysis team as we've gone along. Um, we have high-quality genotyping data. To date, we've imputed uh, these samples to the 1,000 Genomes Reference Panel. So that creates a data set of 50,000 individuals, each with 22 million genetic markers measured across the genome. We have imputation running at the moment, uh, now that we have available... Uh, an additional reference panel of 4,000 individuals who've had whole genome sequencing from the UK 10K project. Combined with the 1,000 genomes panel, that will give us, we estimate, around 31 million genetic variants per individual in the study after QC. So these are very computationally intensive uh, stages. They do take a few, a few weeks um, to run and a little bit of time to QC thereafter. Um, the very rare genotypes, so those with a minor allele count of less than six in any given batch, are actually being recalled, and that's because the calling of the genotypes is trickier for those rarer variants where you've got sparser data. Uh, and we've been working um, with uh, Peter Donnelly and colleagues and Affymetrix to look at the optimal way of calling those variants, and Affymetrix have recently recalled those variants and we've received those data within the last week. Um, so, merging together those recalled variants and our most recent um, uh, imputation uh, panel data, we'll be using that for single variant association testing. For some of the rarest variants, we also undertake gene-based association testing. We have only some very preliminary findings at the moment, but those very preliminary findings in relation to novel variants do indicate that there will be novel variants to report um, from this study, both in terms of association with lung function-related traits, but possibly also in terms of variants which predict smoking behaviour. Um, our data will be deposited with UK Biobank, and Hugh has mentioned uh, something about the timescales for release of the UK Biobank data, given that there will also be uh, data available on the new UK Biobank array uh, as well. Uh, and our findings in terms of the genome-wide association testing will be made publicly available. And in terms of some of those uh, novel uh, uh, association reports, we would expect to be able to report these at three conferences it, taking place in September in Nottingham, uh, near Washington, D.C., and in Liverpool as well as uh, in a little more detail, perhaps, at the American Society of Human Genetics in October. So it just remains for me to thank uh, my co-PI, um, Ian Hall, um, the co-investigators, Louise Wayne and David Strachan, um, on the UK Believe project, the uh, steering group for the project and the analysis group, um, those within my team who've been working uh, so hard on the analyses of these very large data sets. I'd particularly like to thank all of the scientists and staff and uh, participants of, of UK Biobank. Um, this has been a, 
uh, a substantial effort from a very large number of people and not just those uh, immediately associated with the uh, UK Believe Consortium. I'd particularly like to thank Affymetrics for working so hard uh, on the array design, their bioinformatics, and uh, for ensuring that the um, uh, array genotyping has worked so smoothly. The MRC for funding uh, this award and the uh, consortia uh, that undertook the work which uh, underpinned uh, the uh, development of this project. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Martin. A little teaser of some results to come. And um, uh, I think what we'll do now is, is, is break for lunch. Um, if people have questions to Martin, you might be able to winkle out some of the, the results that uh, he knows. Um, please, could you um, uh, be back here uh, for a start at 2 o'clock? Um, and lunch is uh, upstairs uh, where coffee was. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Martin. <laughs>